You said this is the Strangkov's house. So where are they? Yes, I said they live here, not that they're home all day. Strangkov is a doctor, so he may very well work on Saturdays too, and I don't even know what Olga does. Just that she's a very strange woman. Because she dumped you after you fucked. That's not being strange, it's called a one night stand. I thought you of all people would know that. It's not that, but her weird change in behavior, like she was a completely different person all of a sudden. Something similar happened before we hooked up, she went from nice girl to bully within seconds and started throwing those Neanderthals around like rag dolls. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Sure your vampiric charm had nothing to do with any of that. I never use my powers to find lovers. What do you think I am, a sexual predator? Don't answer that. Who or whatever this Olga girl really is, I can tell you one thing she's definitely not. Here. And neither is her father. There's no point in waiting around, let's go. So how does your Eskimo attire work against the sun, Tiamo? It's not very comfortable in this weather, but at least it has the nice side effect of hiding my identity from annoying fans. Hey, Aya. Judith. You know, while it's nice to have an acquaintance in this town, doesn't mean you have to ambush me at every turn now. What do you need from Dr. Strankoff? To get more of his special medicine for High Priestess Domaris. You're the one who told me she was sick, and you live here, so why didn't you think of that? What happens in Strangerville stays in Strangerville. That drug is not what you're looking for. But it helped me with my headache, and even though I lost control over my face muscles for a while, that came back eventually, unlike the headache. I'm feeling great. Why don't you like Stel Maria? Because she caught me stealing a garden gnome from her family's herbary years ago and didn't appreciate it when I turned her into a replacement gnome so no one would notice. That's actually where my habit of gnomey fine people comes from. But I already told you that yesterday. No, you said we'd have to get to know each other better before I'm allowed to ask such questions, and I can see why. That's a rather ridiculous reason to dislike someone, especially since you're the one who wronged her. Oh? And why did I tell you this now? Because you can't lie. That's one of the drug side effects that the doctor doesn't tell his patients about. Are you still feeling great? That's silly. Why would I not be able to lie? What did you steal the garden gnome for? I was strolling through Glimmerbrook on a hot summer day and had nothing better to do. So you admit that this little feud with Stel Maria is entirely your fault? Yes. Damn it, you've made your point. Now stop asking stupid questions. And don't tell me I'll have to remain truthful for the rest of my life from now on. It will pass eventually, but we don't know what other side effects that drug might have, and I don't trust Dr. Strankoff. But still, I survived his drug, and if the High Priestess is dying anyway, we're not making anything worse by giving it to her, are we? The worst thing that can happen is that it doesn't help, but then again, maybe it does, and she'll be cured. Are you suggesting this because you genuinely care about the High Priestess, or because you don't want Stel Maria to take her place? I told you to stop asking questions. All right, it might be worth a try, but we don't need Dr. Strankoff. Come, I can lead you straight to the main ingredient he uses in his medicine. It might be dangerous to consume without any additives though. We're smart witches, we'll figure something out. Do you really think it was a good idea to take off your sunglasses in here? The librarian was at the bar yesterday. She will notice you sooner or later. Nah, I hypnotized her so she can't see or hear me. She might think that you are talking to yourself though. What are you reading? A book about the history of Strangerville. If only half of this is true, then we couldn't have been more wrong about nothing ever happening in this town. Some of these historic events put Alice in Wonderland to shame. Oh let me guess. We're in the middle of the desert, so... Aliens? No, not aliens, but scientific experiments. Lots of them, with some really bizarre outcomes. I thought that spy at the bar was exaggerating when he told me about these things, but nope. Anything on the Strankovs? Wouldn't surprise me to learn that the good doctor has a few skeletons in his germ-free closet. There's a lot actually, but no skeletons. It says here that Dr. Strankov put an end to some of the crazier shit that was going on, the book basically celebrates him as a hero. Oh wait, he's the one who wrote it. And I'm the one who wrote this one. 
Wonderland's one tiny library actually has some of my novels, can you believe it? My very first attempt at porn, all 600 pages. You managed to fill 600 pages with smut. I'm not sure if I should find that impressive or disturbing. The story itself only covers around 500, the rest is disclaimers and trigger warnings. I thought most readers who get triggered by graphic descriptions of sex would be smart enough to avoid porn novels, but the editor insisted. I stand corrected, 100 pages of trigger warnings is even more impressive. Hush. Hush yourself. Captain Strankova, hi. I'm so sorry for how my husband behaved towards you yesterday. I know that's not an excuse, but he wasn't really himself. Well, neither was I. He just needs a good beating every once in a while, but I'm not strong enough to give it to him anymore, so thank you for helping out. Hell, this entire town needs a trigger warning for strangeness. I didn't realize Olga was a soldier. A captain even. Me neither. So are you going to talk to her or what? Yeah, I should probably do that. My brother being shy. I don't think I've seen that since before he became a vampire. Wait. Local scientists once tried to breed a new creature by combining the DNA of a goat with that of a plant. Why would anyone do that? Could such a creature be considered a cannibal if it ate plants? Questions upon questions. What exactly do they research at that lab? The question isn't what they do research, but what they don't. Anything you can imagine, chances are they've already conducted experiments on it. But they will never give you a straight answer if you ask them directly. Well, I'm only here for the strange plant anyway. That's the one you've been talking about, right? Just be careful when you harvest it. Don't let the scientists see you. No problem. Very good. We have the main ingredient of the medicine. Now we just need to find out how to administer it. I'm on it. Aya, uh, wait. You can't just... walk in. What are you doing here? Hush. Don't talk to me. I've been standing here for hours, and I don't think they've noticed me. Really? You're standing right next to the door in a black suit in front of a white wall. It's called hiding in plain sight. But you might just ruin my cover if you continue drawing attention to me, so move along. Alright. Sorry ma'am, but Crater Labs isn't open for visitors today. I believe I saw you at the bar yesterday. You seem quite excited to meet my son Tiamo. Wait, you're his mother? Oh my god, I had no idea. I know, he's the famous one in the family, not me, and people rarely see the resemblance because he takes after his father more. Did you get the autograph you asked him for? Ah uh, yes, he was very kind. Too bad I didn't bring my copy of his latest book, it would have been even better if he had signed that for me. But how could I have known that I was going to meet him here of all places? Do you have that copy with you now? Of course, I'd like to be prepared in case I meet him again. I can't say if you'll meet him again, but I certainly will. How about you give me your book, I'll take it to him for another signature, and then bring it back to you? You would really do that? Oh my god, thank you so much. The book is in my bag in the locker room. I'll be right back. You're welcome. Naive dork. Well played. You were more successful in two minutes than that spy outside has been all day. You'd make a decent spy yourself, Judith. I didn't even notice you come in. I'm a cat. People don't usually notice me or accuse me of plotting. You were right about the strange fruit being dangerous by itself. It says here that it can be lethal if eaten raw, but the addition of a little cheese cancels out most of its ineffects. So I wasn't just imagining the cheesy aftertaste of the medicine Dr. Strankoff gave me. Very well. You're leaving. What about that woman's book you promised to take to your son for signing? Do I look like Mother Teresa? She's a big girl, she can get her own bloody autograph. You're doing great. Keep it up. Thank you. The side effect that compels you to be truthful is obviously starting to wear off. Where's the closest portal to the magic realm? There is only one in this area, close to where we met earlier today. Great. Let's meet there again later. Shh. 
sure. Because having anything else to do is for losers. You keep surprising me, Olga. A few hours ago, all you wanted was to get rid of me as fast as possible, and now we're talking like old friends. What's your secret? I know, that must have been very confusing. I'm terribly sorry for my behavior, not just this morning, but last night as well. And I'm sorry for my arrogance, but I'm not used to being turned down. Why would you be? You're really charming, and if I was into men, I would probably have fallen for you by now. Wait. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Then why did you seduce me last night? It's hard to explain, and would only make everything even more complicated. So let me get this straight, no pun intended, you're a lesbian. Which, after last night, makes me wonder if I'm the one who helped you realize that. No, I've always known. Again, sorry for misleading you, that wasn't my intention. You don't hate me now, do you? Why would I? As someone who finds beauty in every gender, I never really understood why most people commit themselves to just one, but then again, I realize they probably have just as little control over what they're attracted to as I do, so, to each their own I guess. I wish my father was as chill about that as you are. The thing is, he really really wants me to give him grandchildren. But honestly, I wouldn't trust him with them for one second. I can't even imagine what my mother would be like as a grandma, or what the hell she's doing there. Could it be that she's making grilled cheese sandwiches? Smells like it in any case. That's what she's making, but... Why? Hi Tiamo. And, Olga, isn't it? Nice to meet you Mrs. Mamini. Come, have a sandwich. I made them for a particular someone, but there's more than enough for everyone. Thank you. I love grilled cheese. A particular someone? Is there something I should know? Maybe? If you want to know how she really feels about you, now is the time to ask. Trust me. We already cleared that up. All the better. I have something to take care of. See you later. Tiamo, these are delicious. You should definitely try them before I eat them all. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not really a fan of cheese. Not anymore since. Never mind. My father doesn't want me to eat milk products because they make him fart uncontrollably, probably due to some type of lactose intolerance that he doesn't want to admit he has, but I didn't inherit it, so no need to worry. That's fascinating. Oh dear, did I really just say that out loud? I have no idea what's gotten into me. If my personality changed again, I didn't notice. What do you mean by that? I have what my father calls a dissociative identity disorder. That's the real reason behind my abrupt changes in behavior, except contrary to what most people think about that disorder, I actually remember everything my other two personalities do, and it makes me extremely uncomfortable. So you have three different personalities? Yeah, one that constantly gets into trouble but is just as good at getting out of it, one that is a textbook example of a socially awkward but highly intelligent nerd, and this one right now, which can't stop talking for some reason. So that's what my mother meant. I knew she wasn't sharing these sandwiches out of the goodness of her heart. Sorry, I have to go. Something is happening at Crater Labs. I shouldn't have taken such a long break in the first place. I'm coming with you, so you can tell me more about your personalities. I really wish you wouldn't. Is that true? No. Damn it. Okay, fine, you can tag along, but stay out of the action. How are you feeling? Better. Much better. Well, if she says that now, it can't be wrong. Astonishing. What kind of magic is this, Aya? The kind that makes yours look even older than you are, ageless ass hat. I know you're still angry with me because of that misunderstanding we had years ago, but- Misunderstanding? Are you saying that I simply heard you wrong when you suggested sacrificing my children and then cursed them for my refusal? You would think about this differently, if you looked at it from my perspective. I'm not interested in seeing things from your perspective. Don't get the wrong idea about any of this. Today I helped the High Priestess, not you, and the last time we met, I held back because my children were present. But now they're not, so if you're really that keen on being put over my knee like the nasty little brat you are, just keep talking. 
I have to say, and I really don't know why I'm suddenly feeling the urge to say this, but, she's not wrong. I don't have any children myself, but if I did, I wouldn't sacrifice them either, no matter for what purpose. And these sandwiches are really tasty. I realize in hindsight that I might have asked too much of her, and my punishment of her children might have been too harsh. But what's done is done, and I also lost something in the process. Really? What was that? One of our most loyal allies, Aya's husband Lorenzo. The night we lost her, we lost him too. Ah uh, yes, Lorenzo. He and I never really talked, but I do remember him, especially for the tragic circumstances of his arrival in the Magic Realm. Those were very different times back then. Stranger times. Olga, thank you for coming so quickly. There is a scary big guy in the lab who thought he was invisible, and ever since he knows that we can see him, he's forcing us to play some strange game of truth or dare, where we get to choose between revealing a secret about our work, or showing him evidence, and I think he wants to harm your father. Wait, is that you, Tiamo? No. Leslie, focus. What does that man want from my father? It's really you, thank God. Your mother came by earlier today and offered to have my copy of your book signed for me, but unfortunately she forgot to take it with her when she left. What a great coincidence that we meet again. Or is it fate? Um, don't you have more pressing issues to worry about at the moment? Why? Olga is here now, she can take care of it. That's right. I'm here to solve the mystery of the scary big guy. Please, please, sign my book. Do you think you could write, Dear Leslie, I love you. My friends would be so jealous, especially Meredith. Fine, I'll sign your book if you give me something else in return. Anything. What do you need? Dinner. Oh god, you're asking me out? How about here and now? So you were sent to spy on Crater Labs because the government thinks something shady is going on here? Why does everybody suddenly know that? Let me guess, the security breach? I'm very smart, and you're not very effective as a spy. That's not a very nice thing to say. You. Is this your doing? Did you send this man to scare me, in revenge for me stealing your plasma fruit extract when I helped your sister with her luggage? So that was you. I don't even know this guy, but now he'll be the lesser of your problems. Stop. No fighting, please. It gives me anxiety attacks. Look, I don't know what you're searching for, Mr. Grande. Now you know my name too? What are you, a psychic? It's written on the business card you politely handed me when I came in. Oh. Right. What I was going to say is, this is Strangerville, so whatever you're looking for, we probably don't have it. If you'd like to know more about the history of our small town, there are some very good books about it in our library that I can recommend, but please refrain from breaking into our facilities in the future, or I will have no choice but to arrest you. Oh forget it, I'm sick of this job anyway. When I applied to the SCIA, I expected car chases, explosions, shootouts, you know, the cool stuff they do on TV. What I get instead is hours upon hours of watching boring people do boring stuff, and when I ask them to play a little game of truth or dare with me, they immediately think of me as scary. I've had enough of that. Where's the action? You know what? I might just have the ideal job for you. Or rather, I know someone who does. Interested? Yummy, you're an awesome chef Mrs. Mamini. Your children are very lucky. I'm an even more awesome crime boss, and as I told my children at the bar, you're just the kind of guy I would love to hire. But that doesn't mean you have the job yet. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Grande, and don't leave out any details. Let's start with something simple. How willing are you to give up state secrets that you learned during your time as a government agent to make my mother's job easier? Wow, look at how spectacularly your plan backfired. She found a cure for the High Priestess's condition, and recruited a new member for her criminal organization, and tomorrow she will return home without even the faintest idea that none of that was the reason you wanted her to come to Strangerville in the first place. Feeling like a loser yet? Perhaps it's for the best. There is a greater evil in this town, even greater than Aya herself and her family, and it looks like she's not quite ready to face it yet. But she'll come back eventually and make her way to the basement of the lab, right to the object I need her to find. Have you considered simply writing her a letter with foolproof instructions? 
because your visions obviously suck at conveying your message, and all the time and effort you wasted on that pathetic attempt at communication could have been better spent storming the lab than getting that bloody MacGuffin yourself. My powers are getting weaker with every day I spend outside of the magic realm, and I'm no longer strong enough to face such a big threat all by myself. But that shouldn't be your concern bitch. Go back to your family, I'm sure you're being missed. Hey. The fact that you're picking up means you're not where I suspected you to be, or should I say, when? The fact that you're even calling at this hour must mean that you are bored. No luck in stranger will I take it? Not much. How is our other project coming along? You mean my project? Don't forget who gave you the tip to borrow the Mom Mini's fog machine for your wormhole generator. I'd say we make a pretty good team. Yet you still haven't told me what your ultimate goal is. You just expect me to drop everything, report on my progress and generally do your bidding whenever you call. That's not how I define teamwork. You didn't care about that, or about anything other than your scientific breakthrough back when we made our agreement. Now better stick to it, or else there might be consequences. Remember you're talking to the woman who abducted the ageless sage. I may be new to witchcraft, but if not even your almighty leader could escape my time-stopping power, neither will you. So let me tell you just this once that your plans better don't include hurting the girl, because otherwise I will come for you. You don't frighten me, Lorenzo. Good. Because fear makes people nervous, and nervous people are more prone to making mistakes. We don't need that, so be as fearless as you can. Unbelievable how he manages to turn everything into an order that he's giving. 